Hey everyone, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name is Josh. Today we're talking about this crazy thing that happened um, about three weeks ago, actually. It's it's just starting to really pop now. As soon as I saw it, I was like, holy cow. And obviously after this whole Kyle Rittenhouse thing and this, you know, stand your ground and self-preservation and self-defense and all the things that we're talking about, this video obviously is causing quite a disturbance. There's a lot of people divided on what happened. We're going to go through the video and then I interview Madison, who is the daughter of the mom who's filming here, okay? And it's just a crazy, crazy story. And I want to talk to you guys a little bit about it. Then we're going to do a live this week discussing what you think because it's it's not so cut and dry it is actually pretty divided and i we got to talk about it because in canada just this stuff just doesn't exist and it's actually quite interesting scary sad and other things so let's get to it let's talk about it this video is about two guys kyle caruth and chad reed okay the, you've seen it if you haven't i'm going to show a little bit here i'm obviously going to blank out anything that's shows anything because I don't want to get struck and you know YouTube doesn't like this type of stuff so um, basically the story is that Chad goes over to pick up his son at a place that his wife his ex-wife is with Kyle okay Kyle is the boyfriend of the ex-wife it gets pretty crazy and they get into an argument right and so let's let's look at it and we'll break it down frame by frame if we have to because it's very very important to talk about this and the fact that the law should have been there and did its job and did not. And we'll talk about that. Let's get to it. So basically this is the, this is the video here. It's Chad is in the light blue shirt. Kyle is in the black shirt. Chad is going over the house to confront his ex-wife about where his child is. The story is, and we'll get to the interview with Madison is I went to pick up the child where he's supposed to be at school, but wasn't there. And he's like, where's my child? And she was just being a jerk about it, basically using the child as, you know, a pawn in their fights and all that kind of stuff. And so this is what went down at that. Now, Kyle just said, if you can't hear it, cause it's very quiet, get off my property. Chad is trying to talk to his ex-wife there, Christine, I think Christina, Christina, and Kyle's getting in the way. Kyle is not part of this conversation, but he's telling Chad, get off my property when it has nothing to do with Kyle here. Now, I get what he's saying. It's my property. Get off. But it has to be said, and Madison will say this again, is that she works there. That is her place of business. So he's trying to go see where his kid is. So Kyle goes into the house. There's no, like, he's not, he's not, Chad isn't threatening right here. Kyle walks slowly to the house. That has to be seen very slowly. Doesn't look like they're fighting. <laughs> So Chad says, I'll go get him. I was supposed to have him at 315. Where is he? Where is he? She's like, I'll go get him. She's just being a jerk about this. Okay. And she's like, I'll get him. She's like, I'll go get him. Where is he? This is his kid. He is supposed to have his kid at 315 after school. The kid didn't go to school. So he's like, where is it? And she won't tell him. You're playing games telling me that I can pick him up at six. I'm going to have the cops. I've already got the cops on the way to your mom's house. He says, I already have the cops on the way to your mom's house. That's where his child is. <laughs> So he's, they're just arguing, look, and it's, he's not threatening, they're just arguing, and it sounds like they just don't have a great relationship. He's, see, he's not being, he's just upset, right? And this, people were like, well, he's up there every, yelling everybody's like, look, stop playing games or I'm, I'm fixing to bring you guys all to court for this. He's not threatening anything else. I'm subpoenaing your mom. I'm subpoenaing your mom. Then he comes out and says, leave. So there's no threat. He's over there talking to her. He comes out with his weapon, okay? So now it gets crazy because he's like, you can come out with a gun and play this game. First of all, Look, let's be real. I would have left here. So, okay, bye. I would call the police. I don't know who the girl's filming on the, on the other side. Call 911. Call 911. Right there is important. Okay, he shoots. It looks like he almost shot his foot. Like it was pretty close. That's a warning shot. So he pushes him, and then Kyle lines up, shoots twice. And he's dead. Call 911. Call 911. I have it on video, Kyle. You and this is where everybody was like, what is going on? She's just so calm about it. And, we're, and Madison addresses that. I did it, not him. I told you. I told all of y'all. 
We came to get her, his son. So he she didn't should know. have told that. She should have told Why is she just over there filming? She doesn't care. No one seems to care that this guy just got shot and killed. Y'all should be here. None of y'all should be here. I asked you to leave. I did everything. I did not want to do any of this. He's just dead there. Nobody seems to care. 911. She said, oh my God, you really did. So that's the scariest part about this whole thing. So I just wanted to show you guys that. Obviously he's blanked out, but she didn't... <laughs> We're going to get to that. We're get, we asked Madison what happened and we get to that. So let's get to this interview with Madison. It's a very, very interesting story. Obviously, it happened three weeks ago and there has been no charges up to this point. Prosecutors have already accused themselves. There's some crap going on. Let's get to it. Um, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name is Josh and I have Madison with me from Texas, right? Yes. Yes. And Madison, tell us who you are and why we're talking right now. Um, my name's Madison Luscombe. I am Chad Reed's stepdaughter, Jennifer Reed's biological daughter, and um, my stepdad was shot and killed just over three weeks ago. And this is this is now starting to sort of go viral, which is, in my opinion, when I okay, so someone sent me this video and I saw it on Reddit and it started making the rounds and I'm like, if and I didn't really want to watch it because I don't like watching those types of things, but if you do watch it, you know for lack of a better way of saying this, it's not super like there's not blood or anything like that. It's just, it doesn't even look real. Like, and that's yeah. probably, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Why we, you know, the, the reaction to the whole thing, but can you explain to us how you're connected to all this story? Um, I mean, my mom was married to Chad and, mm -hmm. um, Chad was going to, or was trying to locate his youngest son mm -hmm. and was trying to pick him up from his ex-wife, Christina. Mm -hmm. And we'll get obviously we'll get into all that too. Um, and so that's your mom who who was filming this video. Who's filming the other side again? We're not really sure. Um, we also believe that there are other footages that have not been released based okay. off of um, maybe a ring door camera. And it looks to us as though Christina was recording. So we're not yes. really sure if there's more video footage. Um, and I'm not sure who the woman was that was in the house recording. Okay. Yeah. That's, and that's, that's a mystery. Okay. So, um, and can, so before we get to that, what all went down, we've got to go, we got to talk about the story leading up to this whole thing. Cause as a dad myself, um, that's kind of what's drawing me to this more than anything, um, more than the two a more than the castle, whatever it's called more than protect your house and all that kind of stuff and self defense and all that kind of stuff. But moreover, it's more about the sadness of this dad who, and these kids will who and you specifically too will grow up, you know, without without their dad, without your stepdad, with your mom, without her husband, and all this kind of stuff, just for some drama. Now, can you tell yeah. me the entire story, you know, as best you can to where they even go from like when they were married, what happened, uh, it, you know, and give me everything that went down before this incident happened. Um, so what I can tell you is that uh, Christina and Chad had been having a custody battle for approximately a year. Mm -hmm. um, my mom and Chad have known each other for several years um, and they reconnected in um, actually during COVID okay. and got married just over almost three months ago. Now it was two months. almost. So they're, new, they're newlyweds. Yes. Oh my, that just makes this even worse. Yes. Okay. They got geez. married September 4th. So, um, and once, um, my mom started having a relationship with Chad, um, Christina started trying to use the children as pawns. Um, I'm not really sure if there was anything before that. There may have been custody issues before that. I'm just not aware of them, mm -hmm. um, because I haven't really spoken to my mom and I never really spoke to Chad about anything that happened previous to them being together, obviously. Um, but yes, can I, can, can you, are you allowed to give me the details of when Chad and what's her name? What's the mom's name? Are you allowed to tell me that my mother? No, no. The other mom, Christina. Chad's ex-wife. So is between Chad and Christina, how long have they been divorced or broken up? And what's, what was the issue that caused all this consternation? They've been divorced for, I believe four or five years. I'm mm -hmm. not sure the exact date, but I know that it's been around four or five years. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not really sure 
like I ship previous to him having a relationship with my mom. Um, but again, I can't really speak to that cause I'm not sure. I never really yeah. asked about their relationship prior. Um, I just know that a lot of the custody started within the past year. A lot of the battle yeah. started in the past year of like, no, you can't have the kids, even though it's his court ordered time. And they had mm-hmm. been in and out um, of mediation, trying to come up with something that benefits both of them. Right. Um, so, yeah, it, so- it sounds like it could be also a possibility of some kind of jealousy underlying that he might have now been happy and she didn't like seeing that. And she, and this happens in a lot of custody cases and a lot of ex in a lot of marriages anyway, generally that have broken up is that they use the kids for pawns, which, again, is disgusting. OK, it's just. Yeah. The only person that suffers in the end is the kids. Exactly. And my mom is uh, obviously I'm Chad's stepdaughter. So uh, I have a father that was married to my mom in the past and Mm -hmm. they had 50, 50 custody. Uh, We went back and forth every other week. It was never Mm -hmm. a, no, you can't have the kids or, you know, if my mom went out of town, my dad got us. If my dad went Mm -hmm. out of town, my mom got us. That was not the case in Chad and Christina's um, custody agreement. I mean, she, constantly kept the kids from him and had babysitters taking care of them or her mother taking care of them. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was where the frustrations came from that she wasn't even choosing to spend the time with them. She was just using them against him. And obviously Chad loves his kids. This didn't, this was, this was a boil over. It sounds like a boil over of like, he had just had enough. And then it sounds like this, uh, what's the other guy's name? Kyle. Kyle, it sounds like Kyle and him obviously had beef and Chad had just had enough. And it, it almost to me, and I know that you probably can't say this or not, but from looking and it looks, you know, you have more of an inside information. It looks like Kyle was waiting for this moment to me. Now, again, that's speculation that is alleged, but I just, I felt like he was there. We'll get into the details, but I just felt like there was something else besides this boiled over moment, right? It well, sounds like they've been and- fighting before. Kyle and Anne Marie, his um, now ex-wife as of like a week ago, um, they actually were friends with uh, with Chad and Christina. Um, So this is a long standing thing. I mean, they've known each other for a very long time. Um, Our understanding is, is that Christina had been having an affair with Kyle. um, And we kind of knew that and that there was a lot of morality clauses that Christina was trying to pull on Chad. Um, and so there was just a lot of things going on and mm-hmm. obviously the custody had gotten a little ugly. Like they had, they had been battling it out over, you know, the kids. That well, he she just was using that for ammo. Now, am I correct in assuming the whole internet talks about this? So, you know, you might not be able to speak on this, but it sounded like Chad knew something that, the Christine was cheating with this guy and his, his, his wife is a judge. And that's just, there's a lot of, it just gets into, into murky territory. Right. And Chad was, yeah. Chad was like, look, I'm going to like expose this. Right. That's, and is I'm that not true? Sure, I'm not sure if it was more of an exposing thing. I'm not really sure because at the time that, um, mm-hmm. this incident took place Anne Marie and Kyle were already filed for divorce. Um, they filed for divorce in September, I believe. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm not really sure. I do know that Anne Marie referred to Christina as his girlfriend in the affidavit that she filed on November 8th. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not really sure what was known, what wasn't known. Um, it's just our understanding that that had been going on for a while. Um, and is this type of judge somebody who's placed or is someone who runs to that in their position, Anne Marie, her position? Um, she was actually appointed by Governor Abbott this She's, year. Okay, wow. Well, that's this year. <laughs> yes, I believe she was appointed in January, I think, but she will have to rerun for this position. You can only be appointed once. Right. And so this sounds like there's a lot of high stakes stuff going on, specifically if she's going to have to run for reelection to get into this position again. So she's just trying to protect herself. What is the reason for filing divorce at this moment right after this happened? Was that to protect herself, do you think? Or um, what was, well, what was the issue? Already- they had already filed for divorce um, mm-hmm. in September, yep. um, but they did have a hearing a couple of weeks ago um, or like a week ago. I can't remember what the date is. Sorry, my dates are all kind of murky That's right okay. now. Um, but she did file for that. And from my understanding, um, she had filed a TRO, a temporary restraining order, um, trying to remove him mm-hmm. from her house. And wow. um, and 
The, That's a big deal, his, though. The TRO is yeah, a big deal was, because that, that means Kyle is not this like upstanding person that well, doesn't have she, a temper. It shows a lot about him. Who he yeah, is. Yeah. And she even in her affidavit that she filled out, which was actually the first reason that Kyle was even um, able to be named by our local media because they hadn't released his name. Um, and I think it was two weeks. Um, and she filed an affidavit on November 8th. And on the day that they, um, finalized their divorce, he kind of just gave her whatever she wanted, which mm -hmm. I mean, how can you really argue at this point after yep. what's just happened? Mm -hmm. Um, so he kind of just gave her everything she wanted from our understanding. Mm -hmm. And, um, she, in the affidavit actually mentions that she is concerned about his mental state. So... Um, mm -hmm. she definitely, all of their divorce records are sealed now. Um, how are, is that Lubbock normal though? Is that normal? Yeah. No. And, and is it because she's a judge or why is it sealed? What's the, what's the reasoning? I have no idea. We've had a lot of people speak about it. Um, there was a criminal defense attorney that actually came on to one of our local news stations and said, yeah. I'd be interested to know why those are sealed. Judges get divorced all the time and their mm -hmm. records are not sealed. So it's not normal. We're not really sure. We do know that Anne Marie requested that they be sealed from our understanding again. So we're uh, not really sure. Um, but we do believe, you know, Chad loved Anne Marie. Um, Chad's kids love Anne Marie. We truly, you know, hate that his actions have caused her any emotional distress because mm -hmm. from what I've been told, she's truly a wonderful person. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not yet, yeah, I'm not saying there's anything untoward going on with the judge, but it sounds like there is a bit of, Un, this is just unusual, right? This is not something that's normal. So either he is holding something over her and I'm just, again, this is all conjecture. There's nothing, but that he knows something that's just not going to be good to see, or she knows something that's not going to be good for him because at this point he still hasn't been arrested. No charges have been filed. Nothing, right? No. And at this point, I believe that the information has to be um, reviewed by a grand jury. I'm not sure if they will use a Lubbock grand jury or if they will choose to move to a different county. Mm -hmm. I would highly hope that they choose a different county because mm -hmm. obviously um, this is a connected family and our mm -hmm. DA did recuse uh, themselves because okay. an appointed official may have to testify. So they recuse themselves from um, any charges or any investigation. Well, is that why there hasn't been any charges because the prosecution had to recuse because of the connections? I mean, technically, he could have been arrested at the time of the incident and at least held for 72 hours mm -hmm. before pressing charges. Uh, so yeah. in that aspect, that's why we're mad, because he was never arrested even on the scene. That's um, crazy. That's crazy. Because it's probable cause. And again, did, did that mean they went there? They all saw the footage like, yeah, we're good to go. It doesn't even make sense. It says, why don't you bring him in? Let's review everything for the 72 hours we have, just in case that he is dangerous. He just shot and killed somebody just for the safety of everybody let's just sit let's just take a step and do this properly it sounds yep. like his connections played in his favor that's what i'm saying yep i okay, mean that's so our understanding of it we're not really sure why else he wasn't held man this is nuts this is crazy and i've been obviously following recky at a law and all these people following it and they're all like it's 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 one of those cases that you're you're sitting you're looking at it and you're and, the, and a lot of people are saying no it's self-defense it's stand your ground it's the castle law whatever it's called um and they're all like yeah, yeah 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 but then on the other side you got people saying fire a warning shot not supposed to do that anyway that's a like, we don't not. even refer to that as a warning shot we refer to that as aggravated assault um exactly and and you, fired, you know more than i do he fired two actually a lot of people miss the first one um, there is a shot fired before Chad ever touches him, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, at that point he's committed aggravated assault, which is a felony. And once you've committed a felony, barring the fact that withholding the child in itself mm -hmm. was a felony. Mm -hmm. Now you've committed aggravated assault, which is a felony. You have no claims to self-defense in our opinion. That's what, and that's okay. So let's get to the moment this all went down. So can you walk me through, and I'm sure you've talked to your mom about this a hundred times. She's got it. I hope she's journaled it. I hope everything's been documented, but they wake up, they go. He is, Chad is allowed to be there from what I understand because he has a court ordered mandate to go pick up his child. So this guy, is that true? So, I'm not quite sure what court orders um, necessarily states, but I do know that he did try to pick his child up from Christina's house. Mm -hmm. He was not there. Right. So he messaged Christina and asked, where's my son? Mm -hmm. Where's my son? Where's my son? Where's my son? It was, 
I don't, you know, you can pick them up. I'll be home at six. You can pick them up then. I'll be home at six. I'll, you can pick them up then. Mm-hmm. Um, we haven't seen all of the messages. This is my rec- my recollection yeah. from the day that it happened because mm-hmm. I did um, screenshot evidence to give to our attorney that day. Right. Right. Um, but he was asking where his son was so he could go pick. She works at that location. That's her office. At his house. We're not really sure. That's, sure. Okay. I mean, that's it's her. Uh, that's where she works. OK, well, I mean, that, I, this is my office, so I guess my house. I get that. Um, does she work but, for Kyle? Yes. And she's has. OK, now we're kind of putting the pieces together here. So did she work for Kyle before they had a relationship? Yes, I believe so. I see what's going on. Okay, so, so yeah, they went by because he assumed. So Colton was actually sick that day um, and he Christina took him to the doctor. Mm-hmm. So he wasn't in school, which is why Chad wasn't able to pick ah, him up at 315, right? Because sense. he wasn't in school. So we went to Christina's house expecting him to be there. At least I believe he went by Christina's house expecting him to be there. They were not there. Mm-hmm. Um, so then he starts asking where he is, where you can pick him up. Um, and she says, you can pick him up at six. You can pick him up at six. He says, no, yeah. 15 is my time. I want him now. And um, so he goes by the office to see if he is there with Christina because mm-hmm. she had him. He was not yep. at school. Technically, she should have had possession of the child at that point. Yes. And where was he this whole time? Apparently, he was at her mother's house. And this it sounds like she's doing this is what she does, right? Sounds like she's trying to. She, so Christine is not an innocent person in this whole thing at all. Like this is not something she's done this repeatedly. And that's why Chad is at his wit's end. And that's why he's like, look, I don't care anymore. I'm I, I have a right to my to my to my right. These are my those are his custody rights. Those are co- court order documents they're like that's sealed in the law that he's allowed to do that and it sounds like she does that to him a lot and he had just had enough well i mean you even hear him say in the video i'm i'm done playing these games yeah yeah i'm done with you playing these games with me um so yeah he was frustrated which i mean what parent wouldn't be and that's Absolutely. what a lot of people are saying what parent yeah. wouldn't be frustrated in the situation at this point he has no idea where his child is he mm-hmm. doesn't even know if he's in the house or not and why know. would why he would she just not house. answer him? Why would well, he gets there? She, she they freak out. They're all arguing. Why is Christina just saying it's he's with my mother? Why doesn't she just say that? We're not. That's sure. why I'm saying. That's why I'm saying. There's something a little bit more weird about this. Is that they were trying to escalate it with him. They probably knew that this is a moment where it's going to get a little bit fiery. She's filming. Your your mom's filming. Everybody's filming this thing. He gets there. We see what happens at that point. She starts filming when he when everything goes down. Kyle goes into his house after they've had a tussle. And at this point, this is where the argument happens that that's it. Kyle, all he had to do was go into his house, call 911. That's it. He is not, his life is not in danger because he literally walked away into his house while Chad's out there saying, where's my kid? Where's my kid? To Christine, right? And she's just sitting there filming him. It's almost like she was waiting for something. Now, again, I don't know, but just from what my eyes see, what my eyes tell me. We don't. We don't know, but she also does whenever Chad is turns speaking to Kyle because Kyle interrupted their conversation. Mm-hmm. Chad turns and speaks to Kyle. At that point, Christina takes like five steps backwards. Yeah, yeah. We're I'm gonna have to analyze Why? this entire video. I'm gonna have to sit there frame by frame and go over it. And um, so Kyle comes back out, fires one shot, fires another shot, which almost looks like he shot his foot. It was really, really close, if anything. It was. Anyway, to his foot, and then obviously Chad, they get into a, you know, this is a point he's pissed even more now because now Kyle's this you know five foot one dude coming out with his you know this little tiny dude coming out with a big gun and Chad's pissed because he's like really he doesn't I honestly believe that Chad's not gonna hurt him he's just like really he's he's trying to call his bluff as far as I can see now as far as law is concerned doesn't matter right Uh, but in my opinion Chad's just like okay you're just trying to be a tough guy get away from me and they start tussling and I honestly believe and I I wonder if you could corroborate this for me if Chad would have got taken the gun from Kyle he probably wouldn't have done anything with it no I don't believe so. I yeah. I think that Chad probably would have known that he would end up in jail. Yeah, exactly. So then we know what goes down. Kyle takes Kyle gets pushed with the gun, takes two steps back. Chad doesn't move. He doesn't approach. He doesn't lunge. There's nothing like that. When, you know, we talk about the Kyle Rittenhouse situation where there's lunging and people grabbing and threatening and all that kind of stuff. Um, he doesn't lunge. He stands. His hands are at his side. He doesn't move forward. And Kyle just up, boom, boom, done. Now, the issue here is that that's that's if the cop sees that, though, 
And I mean, obviously we can break it down frame by frame. And in the moment you can't break that down frame by frame, both of them blood boiling. There's adrenaline pumping. Everybody's angry and seething. And he knows his, his race married to a judge for long. You know, he knows law probably to a degree anyway. Right. Um, and so he's, it sounds like he, you know, in my, it, in my conjecture, in my tinfoil hat, I'm going to put it on here. It sounds like Kyle's just waiting for a moment like this. It sounds like this isn't the first time they went toe to toe. I right? mean, a lot of people have come to that conclusion. We can't say whether or not that's true. We don't How know many- if this is premeditated or right. intense yep. or anything, but a lot of people have come to that conclusion. How many times have they fought before in the past? Honestly, I don't believe that there's been any confrontation between Kyle and Chad. I don't know okay. that there had been. Like I said, they were friends um at one point so i'm not really sure when this became a thing i don't know okay. if and i'm sure just- that'll all come out you know later through your mom if they, you know if they have to i, I hope they do i hope this <laughs> i mean at this point i hope the pressure is starting to mount enough that somebody's gonna have to some da somewhere prosecutor's gonna have to take this on put charge down because this is this is not even just to like put it in front of a, a jury and say what do you guys think let's present all the evidence because at this point i think the police failed I absolutely see that. Again, they have the uh, they have the right. They're within their legal right to just even if it is 100% toe to toe self defense, they still they can still bring him in and say, "Okay, let's just assess this, so yeah. the public knows we did our job." At, at minimum, the public can see that we did our job. Well, which I mean, they I've didn't had do. I've had a friend. I have a friend who's an attorney, and um, I have other friends. I have mul- I have multiple friends that are attorneys okay. and you know, they've kind of pointed out to me, like, even if a woman was being beat by her husband and he took it too far and she shot and killed him, mm-hmm. she would still be taken in. Absolutely. She would still be detained until they clarified that it was self-defense. Kyle Rittenhouse is a perfect example of this as well. He was mm-hmm. exonerated as in self-defense. Okay. He was still put in jail for 87 yep. days or whatever the case may be. 87 this, days. Even if it's, even if it's, self-defense again what the hell who does this guy know and are the cops is this being sealed can we get the records for this stuff why did they what was there what, what's the cops explanation for not bringing him in the report was four sentences long you've got to be shitting me right now four sentences long for somebody getting killed do you have a copy there's of that? apparently like stuff that's sealed or that we can't see that has more information why um, why is that sealed? I I don't know. I'm this not sure. I just know that the police report is four sentences long from the LPD, which people have questioned. Our media has asked. This is very short for a man that's been killed. ridiculous. Yeah, it's a text um, message. The attorney general's office did release a document to the media that stated um, that had the words homicide and murder in it. Mm-hmm. We're not really sure. Um, I don't really know what's going on. We haven't heard anything from the AG, um, you know, and they've had this at this point, the DA recused, I believe it was the following Wednesday. So it wasn't very long after that the DA recused themselves. So at that point, the AG already had it in their hands. I mean, we're going on at least almost two weeks of them having control of it. So something's up. Something is really up here now. Okay. Let's go back to the incident. Now the comments that came out, if, especially if you go on Reddit, is that when he gets shot, your mom doesn't, she's like, I have that on video, Kyle. Like, it's like, and I know you're, I explain that to us because everybody needs to have that clarified. That needs to be clarified because yeah. it sounds like she's doesn't think it happened. Yeah. I, so I actually watched the video for the first time, um, just a couple of days before it was released because okay. I hadn't watched it. I didn't want to watch it. I didn't know what was on it. Um, right, and right. my husband had actually viewed it like right after I was able to obtain it. Mm-hmm. And so he sat down with me and he was like, I'm going to stop this whenever your mom start, starts screaming. And I was okay. like, okay. Yep. Um, and so he um, cut it off before she starts screaming. And I remember watching it thinking she was really calm in that moment. Yeah. But then I remembered when I showed up to the scene, um, cause I got there about 20 minutes after this had taken place. Okay. Um, okay. I showed up to her. Uh, cause obviously at that point I knew that, Nobody else was going to her. Like I got a phone call and I had to go. Um, so I showed up to her on the scene and she was screaming and crying. And um, she just kept saying, I thought it was a stun gun. Like I thought, I didn't right. think it was okay. a real gun. I, I had no, I, I didn't know he was just shot. I didn't, I didn't know he was dead until I ran up to him and rolled him over. And she just loses it every time she mm-hmm. gets to that point. So yeah, I can't even that's imagine. why um, she truly like, did not believe that it was 
a real gun, which if you listen to the video, yeah. it well, that's the like point. And that's exactly because he's got a carbide rifle, right? What, which which is just basically a silenced uh, muzzle, right? That's what that that is. And it sounds like a paintball gun. It yeah. sounds like a, it doesn't sound mm -hmm. like a, it doesn't sound like, and it's the fact that you need that, whatever. Okay. We, we can talk about that all day. Well, that's not that this whenever, conversation is about, but yeah. Whenever she, whenever she had told me that before I had seen the video, I still didn't understand. I'm like, how do you think a gun is fake? Like if you see it and hear it. And then I saw the video. And at that moment I was like, mm -hmm. oh, it doesn't sound like a gun. I actually first, I, the first time I watched it, I missed the first fired shot, which is while Chad's still standing off the porch. Mm -hmm. I missed that one because it's so quiet. It's so quiet. And that does and make then, sense. I imagine if it would have been like a gunshots, she would have been freaking. And I, I get that. Oh, and so yeah. that makes that makes sense. And obviously, yeah. and she's like, and that's that's one of the conversations that people are having. But then they realize, yeah, I know that she just didn't realize it was real until after. And it sounds like he died right away. It didn't like that was it, right? Yeah, from what we understand, I mean, she's so sad. She said he was gone the moment she rolled him over. So can you walk me through after that? Your mom gets out. You show up. What's Christine? What's Kyle doing? What's going on after the camera stops? Um, so from what I understand, um, my mom and Frankie were escorted off the scene. They had to clean my mom up because mm -hmm. um, she was covered in his blood. Wow. And um Frankie is my 11 year old brother. Sorry. I right. didn't really state that. So they escorted them off the scene. So Frank, sorry. Start first. Talk. Frankie witnessed this. Yes. This 11 year old boy witnessed this. Yes. That, I mean, I know that everything's sad in this, but I, that's going to, that's going to haunt him for the rest of his life. That's so sad right now. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. but that's just, that just made me even more ang angry. So no, it's they okay. get a, they I was get a, devastated yeah. when I got there and realized that he, I mean, I called, so wow. I had a friend call me who was contacted by another, it's kind of a train of how I found out that it had happened. Mm -hmm. Um, but once I got the call, I obviously went, went into full mode panic attack. Mm -hmm. And then I called my mom and she actually answered her phone and was screaming and crying. And she told me her address, the address she was at. And so I hopped mm -hmm. in my car and my little brother called me back and he, he was like, Hey, you can't come onto the scene. Like it's all closed off. And I was like, I don't care. Like I'm still coming. I said, were you there for this? And he said, yes. Mm -hmm. And, and then I just asked him, is he dead? And he said, yes. And I just, mm -hmm. yeah. That's just so sad. So they they take her off the scene with Frankie. And then from what you understand, nobody's arrested. Just question them. The ambulance comes and it's just like, okay, bye. Let's go get yeah, donuts. It doesn't big, make sense. It was a pretty big property. Um, like there was a driveway that you had to drive down. Um, so I'm not like entirely sure what was happening up by the scene. Cause by the time I got there, they had closed off the driveway. Um, mm -hmm. the cop cars were like surrounding up there and they were surrounding the dirt road that's behind the house. And so we were just standing back there by all of the police officers with my mom and my little brother. And that's when they, um, asked my mom and little brother to go down to the station so that they could interview them. Okay. And they interviewed your mom and your brother. And then, then, then what your mom calls and says, what's happening. And they're just like, nothing. We have um, an attorney that has been um, my Chad's attorney for a long time. And he was kind of handling the communications of it all. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't gotten a whole lot of information as to what's happening next. Um, the AG's office has been closed for the past four days because of Thanksgiving. Okay. And um, that doesn't matter. LPD. This is three weeks ago, but this is three weeks ago. This isn't like a few days ago. So yeah. I, it doesn't matter if they're closed for four days. It sounds like they're dragging their feet for some reason until yeah, I guess until, really until sure. it goes until it goes viral enough until they have no choice to, which is shouldn't be the way that justice is, is conducted. That's the problem. Well, Should, shouldn't have to be pressured to 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 bring justice where it's deserved. Yeah. No. I mean, and a lot of people actually um, have been a little have been criticizing a little bit because of the TikTok video that we placed on TikTok. Um, I put it on there, I guess, almost two weeks ago now. Yeah. Almost two you guys weeks were, ago now. Were, were, um, what were you guys doing? You guys were in the kitchen, right? And you were mm -hmm. doing a toast to his memory, right? Yeah. So we, it was actually the day after his funeral and um, all of my siblings were out, 
here. We were, I'm actually at my mom's house now. Um, but we were all out here just kind of loving on her. And, um, she had told us that they would occasionally take a shot whenever something positive happened. Her and Chad would take a shot together to like celebrate. That was like their way of toasting to something, um, positive that had happened. And so she kind of told us that and then asked us if we would be willing to take a shot with her. And of course we said, yes, Mm-hmm. Our mom was grieving, like we're going to do anything for her. Um, and it was actually, that was like four or five days before I actually even posted it. Um, that video wasn't taken or intended to be posted. Um, I'm glad you did. That's how I got a hold of you. That's honestly that video, the amount of views, as much as you will get, you know, a little bit of heat for it. Um, that's, that's, I think it's an important part of this because you guys didn't get any justice to this, not none yet. And the yeah. only thing you could do is honor him by doing the thing that he love to do by honoring his memory. And so I don't, I, I understand why people like don't think you're taking seriously because I think what's happening in tandem, if they watch it, they see that your mom's very calm. So they're like, that's maybe why, but I think in the end, if they understood it, then uh, nobody wants to understand it. That's why I'm talking to you directly. I think very important for this case. Now, a lot of people are going to ta- start talking. Now we're going to bring up this whole stand your ground. Is it called the castle? What's it called? The castle something. The castle doctrine. The castle doctrine, which is you can protect your property um, and self-defense. Again, th- it's obviously going to be argued that it was self-defense. There's a lot of people saying, yeah, he was physical. There was threats and all that kind of stuff. Yes, I agree with that. And I, I think you guys are probably partially in agreement with that as well. But at the same time, you see what everybody else sees. The, the, you're talking about the shot before, which is assault aggravated assault aggravated mm-hmm. assault which you know if that's if that's a letter of the law then it has to be taken in consideration even for the for the rest if they saw that in the video we are like well that's aggravated assault so let's get you down here let's figure this out right but there's nothing and the fact that it gets a little bit more the what 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 gets this a little bit more weird obviously is the relationship with the judge the cheating allegations and the fact that this is all getting crazy because your dad is recently married and happy and everything else. And people are like, it looks, and that's, I didn't even come to that conclusion until I started reading all the comments in the thing that Kyle, it looked like he was just ready to do this. Like no hesitation steps back, Chad stands still and you pop up. And that's like, I told him to leave. And it just doesn't, it's so surreal. It doesn't even look like it makes any sense from a human being's perspective. Like that's not how humans react. They should in any way. No, and, and he, he knew it almost knew it almost felt like he knew he'd get away with it. Well, and I mean, we've people have pointed out like on the the gun talk show that we just recently did. Um, you know, he points out Kyle's like the head of the two way coalition here in Lubbock. Okay. He should wow. know what yeah. he did wrong. You know, he should know how to handle a weapon. He should know the laws. And, you know, this is something where we're sitting here going, if you want to lose your guns, act like this guy. <laughs> like, well, okay. Is, can, I put my t- can I put my tinfoil hat on? not again? use a weapon. Well, exactly. Let me put my tinfoil hat on again. If he's the head of the 2A chapter, is that not then maybe some connections he has as well? Because 2A in Texas is that's 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 canon that's scripture that's like the gospels right that's big time in texas so it sounds like maybe some calls were made to say look and i I don't know because i don't know i'm not i don't have guns here in canada i mean the other thing that um has been pointed out is just his demeanor throughout the whole thing and and how he acts afterwards you know he doesn't render aid christina doesn't render aid my mom at that point didn't even really realize that he had been taught she thought he was going to stand back up she said, oh, my God, and then runs to him. And that's when she realizes. But nobody re- nobody renders aid. You know, people have made points. If it was truly self-defense, he wouldn't have taken his weapon off of him until he knew for sure that mm-hmm. he was down and not yeah, moving. Sh- it's, the, the, it, it, it's it's sketchy at, at the best. You know, it's sketchy at best, which means that the cops should have done something, which is why everybody's like, okay, something else is going on here. Now, well, and that's, you know, we, we believe... In the law, we are a family of, we believe in the law. We, you know, back, we, we, we believe in the right to a fair trial. We -hmm. believe in your rights whenever you're being arrested. We Mm -hmm. believe in all of these things. However, you know, you can't have a fair trial if he's never even charged. Right. And at this point, (laughs) like he hasn't even been charged. And that's not, if, if there are enough people looking at this going, what the heck? That does not fall under the castle doctrine. That is yeah. not standard ground. If there are enough people saying that, yeah. then why has he not been arrested? Why Why are we not giving this to a jury and let them decide 
what yeah. you know they yeah, believe exactly and that's what the evidence has been presented and i think that's what even even the lawyers who are talking about this are saying like you know we might we might think this is what all that is but still bring it forward if you're going to do it to kyle rittenhouse do it here i mean do it exactly. right um and they're gonna they're gonna say you know people are gonna make up their minds but at the same time it's funny i find it odd that your mom and your little brother went down to the police station to give a statement but they he didn't right he From, didn't go down. as far as we know he didn't i'm not sure um i know that christina was there I was ever taken in um we do know he was never detained by police or arrested because if he had been arrested there would have been an arrest record yeah can i okay we'll probably maybe revisit this sometime but because I, I only had a little bit of time but can you tell me now how the kids are feeling do, do they, is your mom connected to his bio kids at all and at this point like what is happening right now is she still married her and i heard her and kyle are still getting married yeah we don't know if they're getting married we do know that he i mean it's stated in the affidavit that was released um that he questioned how long he had to wait until he could get married um but that was wow. never like they were never engaged christina and kyle oh, okay. they literally okay. christina or kyle and Anne marie just got divorced mm -hmm. so we're not really sure what's going on there but they're still um, together they're still together as far as we know they're still together we were alerted that um colton was in a different county with kyle by himself um wow. we have not been able to have any contact with the kids um to like a great extent um you know we are able to we talked to his oldest daughter macy mm -hmm. who is i believe she's 19 she's um actually from his first marriage so he, okay. she's that those are their her half brothers um mm -hmm. and she kind of lets us know how they're doing because she is able to talk to them but mm -hmm. we aren't which is why at this point my mom has filed for um custody of the boys because she believes that they are unsafe and it oh, has been yeah. addressed to her that you know that the one at least one of the children wants to live with her and so the so the children obviously know that Kyle did what he did, and the mom is staying with this guy. I mean, even think about this for a second, just with me. <laughs> okay, regardless of what you think, regardless if it's fully within the legal rights of Kyle to do what he did, okay, that mother is still together with the guy that killed their father. So that to me is just a big effing N O P E. Nope, nope, well, and that's, nope. That's part of what my mom put in her in the affidavit is that there's emotional trauma happening yeah. at this point. Because he, again, think about this from the kids' perspectives. Even if Kyle was justified, it doesn't matter. He shouldn't, they have to literally live or be around the well, killer and, of and their father. Like, holy legally, shit. Legally justified if, that if that's what is decided, which mm -hmm. I pray it's not. Mm -hmm. But legally justified and morally justified are two yeah. different things. Exactly. And uh, you're exactly right. But the issue is, in the end, again, the mother staying with this guy and Morally. literally force yeah morally it's ridiculous to be like well this guy killed your father and, you, and i don't care what you guys think that's at that point you're like i'm sorry that's disgusting that's yeah. just it, regardless of take everything away from this that is disgusting that she well, and, is going to put her even, kids in that position even Anne marie made the comment in her affidavit that she was concerned about his mental state yeah the ex-wife yeah. is concerned about his mental state should we yeah. not be concerned about his mental Absolutely. state and again, there's, and that's why it's probably sealed. There's probably a lot of history of, of violence or anger or whatever the issue is. Clearly, he has an anger issue. Well, clearly, yeah. he killed a guy. <laughs> so, um, that's and it's not to joke or make light of that. This guy has serious anger issues, like big yeah. time, big time. You know, um, what's that small guy syndrome called? There, little uh, man syndrome. Yeah, I think that's what everybody is referring <laughs> to. <laughs> that sounds to me like this has been his whole life leading up to this moment. And again, it doesn't matter. Um, those kids are in danger because this guy killed somebody. So. Even just that, from that perspective, even if it was justified, still means they're unsafe. Because what if they get angry at him? What if they lash out at him for what he did eventually? And he, and he, you know, it's just not safe. They need, they need to be out of there. That's ridiculous. I, that's why this case is, is, I think, even today, going way more viral by the hour. And you need to talk to more people. Joe, Rog Joe Rogan, whoever can hear this case, needs yeah, to hear it. We've, we've been like inundated with um, phone calls and interviews. And, um, you know, I've been asked, like, what is, I think I, I just interviewed with the Daily Dot today um, wow. on the phone. And they asked, you know, what is, 
what is your intent right now? And right now our goal is to make sure those boys are safe. Yeah, we want to make sure that the boys are safe. That's our main priority. Obviously, that's what Chad would want if he was still here. He'd want to make sure those boys are safe. So that's our main priority right now is protecting those boys. Um, And, you know, obviously um, the attention that comes with um, that affidavit that we filed is, you know, just extra at this point, we are praying and hoping we want to see a change for dads. We know that this is, this affects dads everywhere. My mother never withheld us from our father. She would never do that. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's why we're so frustrated because children are not pawns and they should Mm -hmm. not be withheld from fathers or mothers, Mm -hmm. whoever the non-custodial parent is, they should not be withheld from them, especially if they love their kids the way Chad loved his Mm -hmm. kids. Exactly. Chad would do anything for those boys. He FaceTimed them every day, every night. He loved them so much. And all he wanted was more time with his kids. Yeah. That's so sad. Such a sad, sad case here. Um, all right. So what are your next steps? You guys are just waiting for this to the AG to take it another County. Probably you're waiting for this affidavit to go through and yeah. you, can you keep me updated on everything. Like, I mean, I, I'm going to, when I cover this this week, I'm likely going to have a lot of people that are going to want to keep talking this out. I'd love to come to have you back on for a live so people can ask you questions. Like there's going to be, I do what's called crowdsourced real crime. And what happens is I get this, this chat full of amazing, smart people who have really great questions. Some of them are dinks, but it's having (laughs) really good questions. And I'd love for you to come on for a live. It's, it's about an hour and let them, and let you can answer the questions or not, you know, just let me know. Um, I'd love to have that and uh, okay. get, get to keep this going, keep this conversation going until we can get some justice here, because I honestly believe uh, there's way more to this than meets the eye. Yeah. And we are just so thankful for the support and the um, media reach and just, you know, everybody who's standing in our corner saying, we are praying for justice. Um, we've actually started a new hashtag in hopes of um, raising more awareness. It's hashtag mm-hmm. where's my son. So if anybody, um, you know, wants to share this and in support of us to support us or, or share um, this hashtag, where's my son, hashtag justice for Chad. Mm-hmm. Um, we are right now, our eyes are on protecting those children. Exactly. Anything that happens criminally is out of our hands. And so we've got to just let that be and let um the powers that be handle that and yeah. pray for um, the right thing to be done. Exactly. Well, Madison, I really appreciate you coming on. And again, I really hope to have you back for a live. Uh, I think that's going to be really important. If your mom or anybody ever wants to come on my platform to talk about this for, a, 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 you know, I'm not huge or anything, but I'm, I'm happy to have you guys here talk about anything. Um, and yeah, I'm here for you guys. Thank you so much. Okay, Madison, have a great day and we'll be in contact for sure. Thanks, Thank Madison. You. And uh, yeah, I'll be, I'll be in touch. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Josh. I appreciate it. Okay, bye. That's the interview I did last night with Madison. Thank you so much for being on. Again, I want to do more lives about this. I want to talk about this. There's a lot of people that say he was totally justified in doing that. I don't think so. And a lot of people are going to say, well, if you think Kyle Rittenhouse was okay for defending himself, then this should be the same. Not the same. Kyle Rittenhouse feared for his life. He had threats against his life. People were lunging at him, pointing guns at him, hitting him with skateboards. This guy pushed the guy away because he had a gun in front of him. Shouldn't have done that. I agree with you on that, but didn't approach him after that didn't approach him and madison has some important things to say about the warning shots and everything else so that was really really eye-opening what do you guys think below justified not justified what are we going to do about this what is what is going on you know why is he not arrested there's so many things that have to do with the judge and so many things that have been sealed that normally aren't sealed a four a four line police report just crazy so let's continue to talk about this on real crime we'll do a live about it soon i'd love to know your opinion on this and we'll be there so take a deep breath you need that one guys this stuff is really crazy and just i don't know what to think about this stuff i just it's mind-blowing to me that's the big stuff is going on in your country and it's really scary so thanks for joining us here on real crime with the dutch podcast and i will see you tomorrow